face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless. Teachers better support student learning. 
Now, my dear friends, this morning, as I wish you well, I also would like to make certain statements before I conclude uh, these greetings to all the uh, teachers of uh, the institutions. Education would mean towards opening of minds. In uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, Apostle Paul says, Fill your minds with those things that are indeed. It needs to make people good and deserve praise. Things that are true, understand that they are religious, noble, right, pure, lovely and honorable. First, let us note that while God is pleased with our humble obedience, much more than he is impressed with our intellect. He does expect us to educate ourselves and our children. God commands parents to diligently and properly train their children, Proverbs 22. God also reminds children of their responsibility to heed instruction from their parents. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old, Proverbs 23. Education is important to God. It is no surprise that many of his faithful servants were well educated. Moses received best education that the Egyptian royal courts could provide. Moses became mighty in words and deeds and was becoming a highly educated prince of the great Egyptian empire. Acts 7.22 Isaiah was highly educated and became the political and religious counselor of the nation, serving several Judean monarchs. 2 Chronicles 26 and 32 Matthew served as a tax collector before his calling, a position, a position which was required intelligence and education in accounting and civil law as well as in Greek and Aramaic languages. Luke was not only an educated physician but also an accomplished historian, Colossians 4.11. The Apostle Paul is famous as one of the highest and the brightest young students of the law, Galatians 1.14. Yet for each of these men, all their worldly education was only a forerunner of the true education they would receive in God's way. Without proper grounding in God's way, even the finest world education is but vanity. Ecclesiastic chapter 1 and verse 2. When you turn to Romans chapter 12, if it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. In James chapter 3, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. In Matthew's Gospel chapter 10 and verse 24, Jesus is saying, The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Belzebul, how much more the members of his household. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3. Not all educated people are wise. Not all wise people are educated. The two concepts, education and wisdom, are not synonymous. Though the Bible never discourages education, it does urge each of us to become ever more wise. The tragedy is that for too many of our contemporaries, education has obscured the pursuit of knowledge. The context today, and very especially when both the parents work outside the home, there is little supervision of children. Gone are the days where we were talking about uh, people are glued to the TV or video games and you know, and uh, lots of things have been talked about. But you know, after this COVID-19 pandemic, the academic classes have become more and more important for them. And the screen timing is increasing and they are glued, they are glued either to the TV or to the PC or to any other gadgets. Though many parents are conscious and dedicated to transmitting solid values to their children, others, others fail to understand or fulfill their role as parents. Many abdicate their responsibilities to schools, relatives or social workers. Today many children grow up in single parent homes where discipline is scarce and respect for authority is never taught. The insecurity created by rampant 
divorce, parental alcohol and drug abuse, the endless parade of lying lovers and the constant use of foul language by violent and abusive adults with mental and behavioral problems and seriously interfere with the learning process which has put our children into a very difficult position. Is our education system from KG to PG needs a thorough remapping to make it more rigorous, to make it more effective and quality oriented with emphasis on developing a holistic personality and not merely producing certificate holders. The teaching methodology, the syllabus and the learning process need to be reoriented to meet the challenges of this globalized, commercialized, digitalized 21st century. I am sure with the introduction of the new education policy in our country, I hope this will be achieved and you know, there will be understanding and maturity. The students coming out of our schools and colleges should no doubt be techno savvy and scholarly. But more importantly, they should have unshakable integrity and honesty with strong ethical and moral values. They should have empathy, they should have compassion and they should respect their elders and teachers. And as teachers, we need to inculcate scientific temper. The scientific temper would mean refers to an attitude of logical and rational thinking. An individual is considered to have scientific temper if he employs a scientific method of decision making in everyday life. This term was coined by India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru in his book The Discovery of India and cultivate a scientific outlook right from very childhood days. The children should be made to learn through hands on experiments rather than focusing on rote learning. I hear, I forget, I see, I remember, I do, I understand, said the famous Chinese philosopher Confucius. I hear and I forget, I see, I remember, I do and I understand. And that is where hands-on training comes in a greater way than transferring of knowledge to students. As all of you are aware, education is the most important tool for transformation of society. And through enlightenment and empowerment, we are able to transform the society. So the real education must foster all-round development of students. It should lay equal emphasis on academic excellence and skills for self-employment and gainful employment. My dear friends, this morning, we wish you well and God's blessings as you further the knowledge and you know, as you give them the right principles of living, practical knowledge and technical information with the understanding of how to use this knowledge to genuinely further the well-being of the entire world. May this day not only recognize you as a teacher, great teachers like Jesus or Buddha, Ramakrishna, Vivekananda derive their strength and inspiration not from their muscle, mind or intellect, from their faith that they exercise. So when you teach them, teach them the faith. That is why they spoke a language that went straight into the hearts of people. The experience strengthens faith. Those who have faith experience God and they will be able to feel the very presence of God. You and I are called as God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do, Ephesians 2.10. God can use people with or without the natural ability and proper background. God can and often chooses to work with the raw material. He prepares, He empowers. It is for you and me to submit ourselves into God's care. On this day, I wish all the teachers God's blessings as you continue to strive between offline and online classes. And I wish and pray that the days will come quicker, that you will have only physical classes so that you can meet children in your classrooms and interact with them and to get to know them, that you will be able to participate in their life's journey. God bless you and I am sure that you know, this day will bring a lot of cheer and happiness 
to all the teachers, to all of them who are committed to the cause of education. Happy Teachers Day. Thank you and God bless you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you promise us that uh, when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us throughout this session and throughout all the good lessons that we have learned from the teachers. Thank you for our dedicated teachers, for their inspiration in our lives, for their knowledge and skills, for their commitment to our education. Please bless their work. Lead them as their mentor and train the younger generation. Equip them so that they will be able to sow seeds of understanding in the lives of the students. May all of our teachers' lives be enriched. Bring strength where there is weakness. Bring rest where there is tiredness. May they excel in their own abilities and see the potential in each child here. Help all of us to respect each other, understand one another, and never fail to offer kindness and care. To this end, we want to commit all of us. Thank you for being with us. We commit the whole week into your care. In all the ministries that we do, in all the programs and the activities that we participate, we give you all the glory and honor. Thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With faith and confidence, let us receive God's blessings. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, very especially the teaching community, wherever they are, for their sacrificial time, talent, resources, and energy spent on the student community and all the good things to come in the years ahead, both now and forevermore.